She may be popular and beloved by many, but Ellen DeGeneres can be quite the controversial figure. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Ellen was the worst. For this list, we'll be looking at various times in which Ellen DeGeneres displayed unsavory behavior. This can come in the form of controversial moments on her show or allegations that were made against her in the media. Number 10. Forgetting Katy Perry Was Married Ellen has had a few problematic run-ins with poor Katy Perry. One came in October 2017, when Ellen referenced Katy's breasts on Twitter while wishing her a happy birthday. The post was immediately labeled as sexist, and some people saw it as a double standard within the industry, especially amidst the Me Too movement that was occurring at the time. Another instance occurred on Ellen's show, when she told Katy Perry directly to her face that she was never married. You were not married. I was, when I was 25. Katie was forced to awkwardly remind her about Russell Brand, which probably wasn't easy considering she battled depression after the divorce. His name is Russell Brand. Oh, that's right, I forgot about Got Russell. It. Yeah. <laughs> to make matters worse, Katie had to remind Ellen that she gave her wedding gifts on the show. Remember, you gave me some wedding gifts on this show. Yes, I do, I do. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I <laughs> Number nine, making Kathy Griffin cry. There have long been rumors and allegations that Ellen is not nearly as friendly as her public persona suggests. In fact, Kathy Griffin references this in her book, Kathy Griffin's Celebrity Run-Ins, My A to Z Index, saying that Ellen has, quote, a mean streak that all of Hollywood knows about. I'm almost positive a certain beloved daytime talk show host once had me kicked out of the backstage dressing room at the Primetime Emmy Awards. While Kathy doesn't explicitly mention Ellen's name, she accidentally revealed that the allegations were about Ellen while promoting the book. She was furious. <gasps> what, did she say? what did she say? She what just really was on a rant. This caused Ellen to call her up and, as Kathy recalls, quote, I think she had a thought that she was going to put me in my place. The two proceeded to fight over the phone, and when Kathy eventually hung up, she sobbed like a baby. Her words, not ours. Let's move on. I said, Ellen, this is my experience with you. I said, you're, you've been mean to me. I'm not saying you're a mean person across the board, but you can't like take my story away. It's like my experience. Number eight, calling out Nancy. So before the show, I put out some Ellen products with a sign that said only one per person. And um, I just wanted to see how honest my audience was, you know? May we present to you one of the most controversial bits in Ellen history. To test the honesty of her audience, Ellen and her team set up hidden cameras in the gift shop and placed them near a free swag table. The catch? You could only take one free item. I mean, any of you could have taken more than one thing, and you didn't. Except for these ladies right here. <laughs> well, good old Nancy took more than one item, so Ellen decided to call her out in front of everyone and on camera, and proceeded to make her sit in Ellen jail, which was a very high seat to the side of the stage. You think nobody's watching you and you just need to be a good person just because you want to be a good person. You go sit in that Ellen jail over there right now. <laughs> Yeah, the whole thing was most likely staged, but still, that just proves how fake and manufactured these hilarious skits really are. Number seven, annoying celebrities. Wait, don't, Ellen, don't open these up in the store. Why not? There are times Ellen can be so annoying that even her guests can't hide their frustration. Every now and again, Ellen does some kind of remote segment where she takes celebrities out and does silly things with them in public. And inevitably, some end in the guest telling Ellen how annoying she is. I'll turn it off if you don't trust me. I don't. Just hold that. Two great examples of this happening are Michelle Obama and Cher. When Ellen took Michelle Obama shopping to prepare her for life outside the White House, it ended with Michelle telling Ellen that she's really annoying. You know, you're really annoying. I'm really It's annoying. like taking a three-year-old to the store. Not everybody does everything for you anymore. Well, obviously not. I mean, this was hard. Oh. Meanwhile, Cher's clip sees her and Ellen styling hair for some fans. And wouldn't you know it, it ends with Ellen making fun of Cher's lyrics and Cher calling Ellen a bitch. Yeah, she knows me. They know me better yeah. than they know you. <laughs> oh, you're such a bitch. <laughs> Number six, not working with Howard Stern. Remember when Ellen was a judge on American Idol? One of the few people I think that can be honest with Simon mm -hmm. about how he takes on the contestants. Yes. Is that your plan? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Back in 2010, Ellen and Howard Stern were embroiled in some drama when it was announced that Stern was potentially taking over for Simon Cowell. 
Ellen wasn't having any of that, and she allegedly claimed that she would leave the show if Stern was brought in. But here's, here's the thing, I was scared of you for years, I mean years. Howard reciprocated, telling Entertainment Tonight, quote, I won't work with Ellen. She's out if I come in. He was a bit more candid on his radio show, saying, quote, I'm not gonna sit there with her, that dummy. Luckily, they seem to have made up, and Ellen revealed on Stern shows that being a judge on American Idol was, quote, one of the worst decisions she'd ever made. Claire, step forward, and then step back real quick. You're all going through. <laughs> that was funny. You say this. Number five, Dakota Johnson's birthday party. Why well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> I like you. You knew I liked you. You've been on the show many times, and, and don't I show like? If you're not going to show up to someone's birthday party, you better have a solid excuse. Ellen did not. This awkward interaction began when Ellen claimed that she wasn't invited to Dakota Johnson's birthday party. How was the party? I wasn't invited. Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Dakota, however, did invite Ellen. She just didn't show up. Yeah. But I did invite you, and you didn't come. So. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Ellen's crew vaguely responded that she was out of town, and Ellen answered in agreement by saying that she had that thing. Why didn't I go? I don't know. Was it, was it? it oh yeah, I had that thing. Um. <laughs> when Ellen remembered that she'd been invited, she said that Malibu was too far away. So to recap, she lied to Dakota by saying she wasn't invited, she didn't give Dakota an excuse for not showing up, only to claim that the party was too far away. Some friend. No, I think I do remember I was invited. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, no, but I, I really didn't remember that until just now. Number four, she didn't support the writer's strike. I'm Greg Daniels, I'm the showrunner for The Office, and this is our second day of picketing in order to shut down our own show. From November 2007 to February 2008, Hollywood went through the Writers Guild of America strike, centered on increasing funding and profits for professional film and television writers. Ellen was identified as the first scab of the strike, as she crossed the picket lines and went back to work after just one day of protesting alongside her writers. The WGA East subsequently declared that Ellen was, quote, not welcome in New York following her decision, and scathingly stated that she, quote, couldn't even stand by her writers for more than one day. Writers who have helped make her extremely successful. We're not asking for very much. I mean, they want four extra cents a DVD and they want 2.5% of whatever they make for profits for internet. Number three, people can't talk to her on set, allegedly. <laughs> If any stock is to be found in anonymous insider sources, then Ellen really isn't a good person to work for. For one, you literally can't even speak to her. Radar Online has alleged that only a select few employees are allowed to speak to Ellen on set. They claim that employees are also expected to turn their backs to Ellen as she walks by. Which to us sounds a little extreme and gossipy, but hey, it could be true. The source is directly quoted as saying, quote, No one is allowed to engage Ellen in conversation or even look her in the eye. We get wanting to work on a big time talk show, but that sounds like a pure nightmare. Number two, the George W. Bush fiasco. People were upset. They thought, why is a gay Hollywood liberal sitting next to a conservative Republican president? Didn't even notice I'm holding the brand new iPhone 11. And, um, <laughs> Ellen found herself in a bit of trouble when she was caught attending a football game with George W. Bush. Some felt this betrayed Ellen's activism within the LGBTQ community, as W. was opposed to same-sex marriage while in office. And so I'm sitting in the, in the Cowboys suite, the owner of the Cowboys, and secretly cheering every time the Packers scored, or every time another whistleblower came forward. And uh, <laughs> the referees, you guys, the referees. Ellen's defense also garnered some criticism. She stated that she would be kind to everyone, regardless of their personal or political beliefs. This response led to accusations that Ellen was practicing clear class solidarity. That being kind trumped defending human rights, and that she was telling the discriminated to forgive and befriend their oppressors. This just isn't two people who have difference of opinion. I know. People start bringing up things like war criminal yes, and that seemed to be stole a big the issue. election from Al Gore. Right. And a satirical video about the situation, which her team fought to erase, certainly did not help matters. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, she allegedly treats her staff like peasants. And oh, here's my friend, Ron. How are you, Ron? Game. Whatever. Okay, so here we go. We briefly touched on Ellen's alleged hostile working relationship with her staff, but it gets much, much worse. Not only does she allegedly disallow conversation, she allegedly treats staffers as peasants. <laughs> Aside from the no speaky speaky thing, she apparently also doesn't brief her employees about the show, and we assume they're supposed to just go along with her plans. It's also reported that she has an enormous ego, flips out on people over the smallest things, and perhaps worst of all, generates discord within her staff by excluding certain people from events to create tension, jealousy, and hurt feelings. She sounds like a great boss. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.